Welcome all to this tutorial. Today I will talk about partitions and partitioning. In Linux it's fairly simple. However, you do need to use the command line interface, but the commands are not complicated at all. For partitioning, they are rather short and pretty easy to comprehend. This is not a difficult chapter, uh, but a relevant one in any case. But it's not very difficult. It's not, it's not very challenging. Uh, the commands are short and simple, easy to understand, and easy to remember as well. Let's go ahead and begin with known file systems that are used. So XFS is one of them. That is the default file system of Red Hat and a lot of distros today, a lot of significant distros today, the bigger ones anyway. It is very fast and that is its primary, that is its primary advantage is the speed over EXT4 which is a lot slower than XFS. There are some other differences but that's that's the primary one, the speed. Uh, the speed difference you wouldn't probably notice on a file system which is maybe a hundred gigs total size but imagine if you had about a hundred terabytes or even a petabyte which is a which is 1000 terabytes and if you were searching for a file in that system and if you were using X4 over XFS you would definitely notice that it's a lot slower. It's been around for a while X4 and it's really old now. It's been built for systems that were that didn't really have a lot of capabilities in terms of storage back then storage was measured in megabytes so hard drives were actually in megabytes so just keep that in mind anyway next up we have vfat vfat is for compatibility primarily this is something that you would use to format your usb drives or portable storage uh, for the sake of compatibility with other operating systems such as windows now this is it's not a good idea to actually format your partitions as VFAT in your desktop machine or in your server machine because I, I just in this moment I instantly saw like a hundred people thinking oh I'm going to format all of my partitions with VFAT and then I can share all my drives with my Windows machine true you could probably do that although then you might as well format them as NTFS uh, NTFS. This is a file system used by Windows, but this is not something we do in Linux. That's equal to heresy, and you would sig you would significantly hinder your operating system. So just use XFS, which is the well. It's not the latest one. There are some other ones that were supposed to come alive this year but with Red Hat 7 and 7.1 but it would seem that XFS has remained persistent and it stays and it has stayed the way it is. Anyway, in order for us to have a look at the partitions, well we can either type in fdisk-l. fdisk is a fantastic utility. It has been around with us for quite a long time now and it has served pretty much all who have used it very well. Here we can see some of the inter some interesting information. You can see uh, dev SDA1, SDA2, these are the two partitions. SDA, that's the disk up there, so it says dev SDA, and down here it says dev SDA1 and 2. These are the two partitions of the disk SDA. Now, I don't believe I have another disk here. No, I do not. Uh, this is a bit difficult to see, if you, especially if you are starting up with this. It's kind of difficult to figure out what is what, where is what. For the time being, I would advise you to focus yourselves on this first line here and then follow up on what is written down below immediately. So, where it's, yeah, there we go. So, where it says devices and I don't know, it says boot and then it has a markation for boot, where it's booting from, where is it booting from. Uh, you don't actually need to pay that much attention to these lines here as they are not that significant for you at this point of time. 
But like this, you will be able to see the partitions of the disk. You will be able to see the disk, the device itself. Another way of doing this is by typing in uh, cat proc partitions. And proc is basically a communication of the kernel with the user. Well, I wouldn't put it like that, but it's a fantastic way to see the things that the kernel is doing as because in Linux everything is a file so even the things that the kernel is doing are being written out here so that you can actually see them so these are the partitions and the disks that are known to the kernel I didn't have to list the partitions I could have done uh, let's do ls proc so you have a lot of things here if I were to open for example this file you probably wouldn't understand the contents of it doesn't matter completely relevant for you now but let me just show you I'll mem uh, no oh yeah proc I'll mem it's just a bit of extra I guess come on why 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 aren't you doing it ah oh, okay cat So this is input output mem memory, and this is uh, something that the kernel has written out to this file. There it can be seen and usually used for troubleshooting purposes, uh, complex troubleshooting, pretty much the, the sort of problems where you literally dig your head into the system and you don't dig it out for the next week, and then you... Uh, basically don't go to sleep you crash your brain crashes and eventually it reboots and everything is fine hopefully anyway let's stick let's stick back to the subject so proc and we're gonna have to go ahead and type in uh, partitions press enter and here I can see that I have partition SDA1, SDA2, this is SDA, this is the disk, and SR0 is actually my drive bay, well, not my drive bay, my CD bay. So that's, that's, where, I, that's where I would put a CD into a computer, uh, the physical place where I would put a CD into the computer. Anyway, can go ahead and dump the rest. Now, at this point of time, I would like you all to go ahead and create an additional disk in VirtualBox for us to partition. This is fairly easy to do. You just go over to just go over to machine settings storage, and you won't be able to do this while the system is up and running so just keep that in mind it says the first one it says add CD DVD device the second one it says add hard disk now it's supposed to have a VDI extension you can name it whatever you like it doesn't really matter whatever you wish you can name it uh, probably you should name it something that is unique to you or that's uh, that's fun and interesting because you're gonna have to look at that label for label for a while and yeah you should name you should have it it should be interesting to an extent anyway I am going to do this in the next tutorial where I continue with the partitioning section but I would like you to do this before we get into the next tutorial if you fail it's perfectly okay uh, just follow through the next tutorial and I will show you exactly how to do it this is two three seconds that's all, but the machine needs to be powered off. Anyway, I would like to bid you all farewell and a ton load of luck until next tutorial.